and here we are. Applications is what word problems are called now. And indeed, we're going over how these things are used. That's what an application is. My favorite way that maximum minimum problems are used is with rockets. I just like it, it's very exciting to me. Well, this is a toy rocket, all right? A toy rocket is shot vertically into the air from a launching pad seven feet above the ground. With an initial velocity, that means with a beginning velocity of 128 feet per second. The height, H, in feet of the rocket above the ground, T seconds after it's launched, is given by this formula. And I'm going to write it down right now a little bit bigger. Okay. H at time T. Okay. Sometimes with word problems, it's better to use the word at because that's what it really means. The height at this many seconds after launch is given by this formula, 16 t squared plus 128 t plus 7. Okay. How long will it take the rocket to reach its maximum height? And what is the maximum height? Let's talk about this. See, how long? All right. How long means what time? So how long means what time or how much time? which means T, you're looking for T. How long will it take the rocket to reach its max height? So how long to max height? And what is the maximum height? All right, let's talk about this. We are more used to seeing something like this. Y equals negative 16 X squared plus 128 X plus seven. The reason I did this is notice that H of T is in the Y position. In fact, it is Y. And the X's are in the T position. T is acting like X and H is acting like Y. So we're being asked, what is the maximum height? Oh, no, we're not. The first question is, how long, what is the time to the maximum height? They're really saying, okay, what is the X coordinate? And what is the maximum height? They're really asking, what is Y? So what they're asking for is X, Y. Which in this problem is T and H. But then there's that word maximum, maximum, maximum. The words maximum and minimum
minimum. OK, so I'm going to put those in parentheses because I'm talking about the words. What they mean is find the vertex. Find the vertex. So what we're really all we're trying to do is find H. K. And since the A number is less than zero, we know that we've got a cup down parabola, if you were going to graph this, with the vertex at the top. So we're looking for a maximum point and a maximum value. the maximum value is K, or whatever the Y coordinate is. Here it's really going to be H. But notice that H is what the X coordinate is usually called. So you have to be very careful when it comes to height problems. This H and this H are two entirely different things. So it might be better to rewrite this as y equals negative 16x squared, and then it's just more normal. All right, but since t is the x coordinate, that's, our, that's the time that it takes for the rocket to get to its highest value. So I should really write it like this. The vertex, let's write it in words so it's less confusing. Time is, is acting like the X coordinate and height is acting like the Y coordinate. So the vertex of course is your HK but now time is what I'll calculate by finding H and then plugging H into this is going to give me K, which is the highest point, the actual maximum value. Okay, so we have time and we have height which is the Y coordinate. So now let's do this. Time is H equals negative B over 2A. So our time is going to be, time to the maximum height is going to be negative B over 2A. So it's going to be negative, negative 16 over to uh, uh, negative 128, positive 128. So negative 128, that's what B is, 128, over A, which is negative 16, not numbers that we're normally familiar with. So this is going to be negative 128 over negative 32. So let's put that in the calculator. Negative 128 divided by negative 32. Boom. Four. So this is the time to the maximum height. Time it takes to get to the maximum height. And that's four seconds. Now, 
I can go back to my original function or I can stay with Y if I want to. Is it seven? Yes. So that's correct. Yep, this is what I'll put in my calculator now. Negative 16 parentheses four, well, it's positive, but what the heck, four squared plus 128 parentheses four parentheses closed plus seven. and I get 263. So here's negative 16 times four squared plus 128 times four plus seven is 263 feet. So the max height is 263 feet. So when you're using this, you have to get used to, sometimes they use other letters, other than X. But if it acts like an X, then it, it can be treated like an X. And if it acts like a Y, it can be treated like a Y. So whenever you're asked to find the maximum or the minimum, all you're being asked to do is find the vertex. And the hard part is going to be figuring out what is my X, what is my Y? That is, what is my H, what is my K? Discussion, clarification. Oh, I've got to stretch my legs out. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Business majors, this one is for you. The profit of a company in dollars is the difference between the company's revenue and cost. The cost, C of X, and the revenue, R of X, are functions for a particular company. The X represents the number of items produced and sold to distributors. So now, let's define our terms for people who are not familiar with business. Revenue is the money you take in. You like that. But cost, that's considerably less friendly. That's the money that goes out. Money you pay workers, money you pay for the mortgage on your factory and for the upkeep on your machines, maybe new machines. Money, uh, taxes, right? It's all that stuff. So money that goes out. Profit, don't you run away from me. Profit is the money you have left after your costs are all paid. So that equals the revenue minus the cost. So 
So in the parlance of this, where you're dealing with C of X and R of X, P of X is going to equal R of X minus C of X. And what we have to do for this problem is determine the maximum profit. But we need to determine the profit before we can determine the maximum profit. So let's do it. P of X equals R of X, I'm going to leave it a little room, minus C of X. So I can write the function in. All right, R of X is 790, 790X minus X squared. That's what my R of X is. And I am going to subtract the cost. Twenty two hundred plus fifty X. And that has got to be in parentheses because you're going to be distributing your minus sign. Number one error for people. They forget to distribute the minus sign to the other number. Don't let that happen to you. Equals 790 times X minus X squared minus 2200 minus 50 x. Now you combine your like terms. You're going to have negative x squared plus 790x minus 50x minus 2200. And that's going to be 740x. So our profit, our profit function is negative one times X squared plus 740X minus 2200. And the reason I wrote the negative one was just to make a note out here that negative one is less than zero. So you have a cupped up parabola. The vertex is at the top. It's the highest point, so this is the maximum point. <laughs> maximum point. Boom, boom. Okay. Maximum value. But what's the maximum value? If you're dealing with your vertex, which is HK, then H is your X coordinate, K is your Y coordinate. K, the Y coordinate is the maximum value. That is the maximum profit. Right, because this is acting like Y. And the rest, you've got your X's. So it's the Y coordinate that's the maximum value, which means it's your profit. The Y value, K, is going to be your maximum profit. So what is H? What is our X coordinate? 
in this case, your X coordinate, H, put it down here, H is the number, the number, of widgets, items. That must be manufactured, made. That must be made and sold. The way the, the problem is, is worded. Made and sold. For there to be a maximum profit. And what's the maximum profit? Your K number, your Y coordinate. So we have to find the X coordinate first before we can find the K, um, the K question. So notice they ask you what the maximum profit is before they ask you to determine the number of items that must be produced and sold. That's backwards. So don't let them mess you up because that's the reason they're writing it backwards. Do you really know the difference between the number of items produced and sold and what profit is? So this is kind of designed to mess you up so that then you look at your error and you get clear about it. So let's do this. All right, our H, which is our X coordinate, the number of items produced and sold, is gonna be the answer to the second question. H equals negative B over two A. So that's gonna be negative Oh, here it is. Negative B, 740, over 2A, 2 times negative 1. So we're going to have negative 740 over negative 2. That'll make it positive, which makes sense, right? You're not going to make negative items. So let me see, where's my calculator? Here it is. Clear. Negative 740 divided by negative 2 is 370. So you need to make and sell 370 widgets. What's a widget? I don't know, it's kind of a made up thing. Um, a number of items you're gonna make and sell in order to achieve your maximum profit. Well, what is the maximum profit already? Well, it's P of. 370, which is code for put a 370 in for every X. That's what your K is. Um, so, 370, negative 370 squared. That's right, get it together, Barbara. Negative one, the way I wrote it here, negative one times 370 squared. Right, okay. Plus 740 times 370 minus 2200. All right, so. 
um, here we go. All right, time to move over here. I love being able to move these electronic calculators around. Negative one parentheses 370 squared. Notice the negative one is not in there with the 370. 370 is positive. So 370 squared, negative one times 370 squared, plus 740. times 370 minus 2200. So let me go back, just make sure I wrote it correctly. Negative one times 370 squared plus 740 times 370 plus 2200, boom. 134,700, how much do they have? Yes! <laughs> 134. And okay, determine the number of items that must be produced and sold to obtain a maximum profit. Well, we had to find that first. It's unfair. 370. Notice that this is the X coordinate of the vertex. This is the thing that makes, makes the maximum value happen. It's only if you make and sell that many items that you're going to achieve your maximum profit, which is the Y coordinate of the vertex. Okay. So let's see, they call that A and B, but we do have our answers, A and B. Now, discussion, questions, clarifications. While I take a sip of coffee. Can you tell, tell which, which is, is um, um, how, can you how, know, can, how do you how know, you know that H is, is the expense yeah. manufactured and K, and K is, is the profit? profit? Years of working with it, but the way you would know is that whatever is asking, asking, whatever is acting like the X is not the maximum value. So the maximum profit is the maximum value. So the thing, the other thing is going to be what the X is, but the X is what makes it happen. So the way this is worded, you have got to produce and sell the right number of X's for the maximum profit to happen. So, so the X is the, is the consistent, consistent variable, variable and the Y is the dependent variable? Yes. Okay. Yeah, very good. Yeah, the X is the independent variable. For instance, we can choose any number we want if you're just graphing for uh, for X. But Y is dependent on what the X is. The profit is dependent on how many items you produce and sell. So you want to make sure it's the right number of items so you get your max profit. That's the best answer I can come up with. More questions, more qu questions about clarifications.
Okay, we move on. There's one more. There's this. Now, however many of you have been following the news, or how many of you have ever driven by a farm or been on a farm, you know that sheep and cattle go into the water. I don't know about sheep, but I do know cattle walk out into the water. They love to stand in the water. Which is why I think this is the dumbest problem ever written, but it's in in almost every college algebra book there is. Here it is. A rancher needs to enclose two ad adjacent rectangle corrals, one for cattle and one for sheep. If the river forms one side of the corrals and 390 yards of fencing is available, find the largest total area, in other words, the maximum total area that can be enclosed. This rancher is assuming, must be a newbie from the city. I mean, I'm from the city. I, I don't know it from anything, but I know that on the news I've seen picture of cattle. And when I've driven in the country, seen cattle out in the water. So I don't think the cattle are afraid of water. Anyway, this is what, this is the assumption the rancher is going on that he does not need to fence off the river. In other words, Bossy is not gonna go in there and walk around and get free. All right, whatever. That is, um, that is my major gripe against this problem. But because it might be on the final, you have to be aware of it. So here we go. What this problem is saying is that there's only a certain amount of fencing. Okay, we can deal with that. There's only a certain amount of fencing. This isn't included in the fencing. And this is not included in the fencing. Okay, so your fencing consists of these sides and the length. And this is the farmer's plan with his 390 yards of fencing. And he wants to get the biggest bang for his buck. Namely, he wants to get the maximum area. So here we have an interesting situation. We have the amount of fencing and fencing and perimeter are the same thing, where you've got W plus W plus W plus L. You, you kill me kill sometimes. Me sometimes. I, I don't try to. My ex-husband used to say that a lot. Um, <laughs> seriously. Okay, so now we're gonna have to deal with this, 390 equals 3W plus L. So now, since L just has a one in front of it, it's gonna be easier to solve for L now. So minus 3W and minus 3W. L equals 390 minus 3W. That's what L is. So now, 
this actually ends up being much easier because you don't need to remember the formula for perimeter because if you did remember the formula of perimeter, you would have done it wrong. Instead, we're going to have A equals 390 minus 3W times W. And then we're going to distribute. We can distribute backwards just like we can distri distribute forwards. So A, let me scroll up. Three ninety W minus three W squared. So A is going to equal negative three W squared plus three ninety W. And notice, have to say it again, W is acting like X and A is acting like Y. So this is where you get your maximum value from. And this is the width that needs to be there in order to maximize the area, in order to give you the maximum area. If you were to graph this, change the W's to X's and graph it in your calculator, you would see a cup down parabola because negative three is less than zero. There would be your vertex. It's a maximum value. Well, it's a maximum point. And the Y coordinate is the maximum value. And what's acting like the Y coordinate? A is acting like Y. So that actually is the way I do it. All right, so if we decide to call this HK, then our H equals negative B over 2A equals negative 390 over 2 times negative 3, which is going to be negative 390 over negative 6. So let us see what that is. Go away, you two. Negative 390 divided by negative 6 is 65. So our width has to be positive 65. That's our W. That's not what we're being asked for, but it's what we need in order to do this. That's one way to do it. But how long have you been finding the area of a rectangle since you were a little kid in elementary school? A equals LW. Now that you know what your length is, you can find your length right here. 
Would that be easier? I don't know. But you could find your length and then multiply length times width. Notice that the way we did this, considering we saw for L, L is dependent on W. Whatever W is will cause the answer to L to be the answer to L. So L depends on W. And then we can multiply length times width, or you can just do it this way, whichever you prefer. So I suppose the, the most straightforward way though, given that's how we've learned it today, is just to do that. So negative three parentheses, I just put parentheses, you don't actually have to. When it's a positive number, you don't have to use parentheses. But it's a habit for me. Twelve thousand six hundred seventy five feet is what our farmer. Let me write it down somewhere. So I can check it. Thank you. Yeah, twelve thousand six hundred seventy five square yards, not square feet. This is all in yards. Well, all right, so the calculator gave us the right answer. Let's see if we would have gotten the right answer. Okay, over here. L would be 390 minus uh, 3 times 65. So what is that? 390 minus 3 times 65 minus 3 parentheses 65. Enter. Oh, you poo poo head. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. All right. Now, 195 for the length. And I should have made it in blue, but I didn't. I'm bad. So A equals length 195 times width 65. Is that going to give us the same answer? Let's look and see. 195 times 65. Please be the same answer. Yes. OK. Which is to show you that sometimes you have choices. So whichever you prefer. Now, personally, when I was a student, I wanted to stay safe. So I probably would have just done that. But now as a teacher, I'm a little freer, which sometimes means I put the wrong formula in for perimeter. But Alas, all has been successfully corrected. What do you think? So, so Kansas was, was the most management area, the area that got uh, What was uh, H, H again? again? H was our width. It was the thing acting like X. Gotcha. gotcha. Which is not terribly intellectual, you realize, but it's real. More questions about this. It is an effort, you know, to figure out how you know which is the maximum and which is the thing that goes into making the maximum. And I admit it's not easy.
Okay, we are winding down.